All right, this video I'm going to show you how to find relative max and mins uh, using the second derivative test. Uh, I don't, I don't ever use it. Uh, I always do the first derivative test. Uh, I've just found no need to use the second derivative test, but you know, you may have a teacher that makes you do it. So here's a video showing you how to. So let f be a function such that f prime of c equals zero. Okay, so we're going to find critical numbers, and the second derivative of f exists on an open interval containing c. So if the second derivative, if f double prime of c is greater than zero, or so if we take the critical number, put it in the second derivative, and we get a positive number, then we have a relative minimum. And then if the second derivative evaluated at c is negative, then we have a relative maximum. And then you can see here if f double prime of c equals zero, then the test fails and we have to use the first derivative test. All right, so let's look at our problem. All right, so use the second derivative test to find all relative extrema. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to find the first derivative. So that's negative 15x to the fourth plus 15x squared, set it equal to zero, and solve for x. So I'm going to factor out a negative 15x squared. That'll leave me with x squared minus 1 equals zero. So I've got x squared equals zero, or x squared minus 1 equals zero. So I get x is zero or x is plus or minus 1. So what we have to do now is we have to take each one of these critical numbers and plug them into the second derivative, okay, into the second derivative. So let's see, I'm going to write my critical numbers up here, 0 and plus or minus 1. I'm going to erase this where we solved to find our critical numbers. And we need the second derivative. So the second derivative is going to be negative, six, negative 60x cubed plus 30x squared. So there is our second derivative. So what we're going to do now <clears throat> is evaluate each one of these numbers. So I have f double prime of negative 1 is negative 60 times negative 1 cubed plus 30 times negative 1 squared. And that gives me, uh, let's see, negative, that's negative positive. So I get, okay, so, well, I messed up, didn't I? The derivative of 15x squared is just 30x. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so this is going to give me, that's going to be positive 60 minus 30 is 30, which that is greater than 0. So you can see, since it's positive, we have a relative minimum. And then f double prime of positive 1 is negative 60 times 1 cubed plus 30 times 1. That is going to be negative 30, which is less than 0. So we have a relative maximum there. And then f double prime of 0 is going to be negative 60 times 0 cubed plus 30 times 0, which is 0. So the test fails here. Okay, So here we have a relative uh, minimum. Here we have a relative maximum. And here the test fails. All right, so Let's go ahead and we have a 
relative minimum at x equal negative 1 and then we need our y value so I'm going to show you how to do it on this one I'm not going to do it on this one but to find our y value you have to take your x value and this is where students get confused all the time you take your x value plug it back into the original function to get the y value so that's f of negative 1 is negative 3 times negative 1 to the fifth plus 5 times negative 1 cubed and so there that's going to be negative 2 so our y value is negative 2 and then we have a relative maximum at uh, x equal 1 and then we would take the 1 plug it back into the original and when you do you get positive 2 all right well now for the 0 for zero, the test fails, so that means we have to go back to the uh, first derivative test. So let me erase this so I can do the work right here so we can still see everything. So for that, I need the first derivative. And I'll show you. I mean, th this is why you don't use the second derivative use sometimes a lot of times it's more work alright so so to do the first derivative test I've got to actually plot all of these on a number line and that's where you come and you choose a number from each region okay that's this is negative one half and then here x equal one half and here x equal two. Alright, so now we have to take, well, we don't have to worry about this one or this one because we're just looking right here to see if it changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. So, uh, so we're going to need to plug the negative one half in here and the positive one half in here. So if I do f prime of negative one half and when I plug the negative one half in, I don't care, okay? I don't care if I get a what the exact value I get. I just want to know am I getting a positive or negative number? Because if it's positive, that means it's increasing. If I get a negative, it means it's decreasing. So uh, f of negative one is going to get okay. So that's going to give me a positive value. So that means here it is increasing. And then if I do and then if I do f prime of one half, so I plug the one half into the derivative, that's going to give me a positive value also. And I mean it's going to give me the same value as the negative one half, because you can see I'm raising both of them to the fourth, so it's going to be positive. And so So here on this interval, it's increasing. So it doesn't change increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. So there's no relative max or min at zero. Okay, But because there's no relative max or min at zero, it's not because the test failed. It's not because of that. It's because we went back and did the first derivative test that it's showing there's no max or min. Okay. Just because the second derivative test fails does not mean there is not a relative max or min there. Okay, It's exactly what it says. The test failed. We don't know. So we got to go back and use the first derivative test. And so here's your relative max and mins. All right, so I hope this video helped. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, thanks.